Hello, kind viewers, and welcome to Golden Age Technology. Today, we are glad to present an informative do-it-yourself demonstration with the help of Mr. Peter Wood, an everyday handyman and sustainable energy enthusiast from Austria. We will learn how to produce the clean and green oxyhydrogen or HHO gas using equipment that is easily obtainable by most people. Oxyhydrogen gas is a wonderfully versatile and efficient gas. It is also environmentally friendly, creating only water vapor as a byproduct and no greenhouse gas emissions. It is produced by running an electrical charge through water via a dry cell electrolyzer. The electricity splits the water into its two gases, hydrogen and oxygen. The result is a gas that can be created on demand. Oxyhydrogen gas is non-toxic, which makes it safe to use for industrial operations. It can burn at very high temperatures and even adjust its temperature depending on the material it is in contact with. In the air, it can burn at around 230 degrees Celsius, yet when it is in contact with a strong metal, it can cut through it at a temperature of over 6000 degrees Celsius. HHO gas has become popular for use with industrial welding and cutting equipment. Peter Wood will now show us the dry cell electrolyzer he has built. Two years ago, I started to make a research with uh, hydrogen and oxygen. I started to look in the internet and very quickly I could find some good possibilities uh, to build for my own dry cell. Dry cell is something which separates out of the water the two different gases uh, call it uh, hydrogen and oxygen. Uh, and so I started to build this uh, kind of uh, dry cells. Here is the dry cell. It is two sheets of stainless steel separated by gasket. And uh, when the, the electricity uh, comes uh, to the poles, then the, the water is split up in uh, hydrogen and oxygen and I need only to push one button now to give the, the current on the, the plates and the device will start to split uh, the water and here I have the other one now both are in action now I name parts for you this is uh, one electrolyzer this is a second one and so we have two devices and this cell has water in it but only uh, very little because it has a, a water container which is this part here you can see here is water in it and it's just uh, uh, distilled water with a little bit of an electrolyte called uh, potassium hydroxide uh, this stays in the container and is not used by the process. So you can see the liquid comes in on bo to both uh, devices on one side and on the other side the gas comes out with a little bit of liquid and goes back to the container. And from the container uh, the gas is separated uh, from the water and goes to the next device which we can see here. I have two of them. Uh, this is called bubbler. A bubbler is a, a box filled with water and the gas has to go through the water. And then I have a next part and this is mainly used for welding purpose when we want to uh, make a flame with this gas. This is the so-called flashback arrester it's a copper tube with uh, fittings on both sides and this copper tube is filled with uh, stainless steel wool and the stainless steel wool 
I have here uh, in the back. I can show you. It's very, very thin, very fine steel wool. And this is very uh, tight, has to be very tight in this copper tube. And this can also stop any backflash of the gas. You would know that HHO, it's a mixture of hydrogen and oxygen. And this is normally very, very quickly can enlighten it like a flash. Uh, so normal uh, flag bash uh, valves would not help. So these are the parts. Here we have some other thing uh, because we need current. And so for current, I have car batteries. Or another possibility would be just batteries. My uh, dry cell, I let it run on 24 volt. So I need two batteries in series to get my 24 volts. And so we can uh, have a look how it works. I connect uh, the battery with the cell and immediately it starts to work. This is only the small cell working now. And then I connect uh, the power source to the other one. And this one too starts to work. Mr. Wood has built two dry cells in order to create more gas. He could also have created a large single cell but it is easier for him to transport two smaller and lighter cells. You're watching Golden Age Technology. When we return, we will continue with our presentation on producing oxyhydrogen gas at home. Please stay tuned on Supreme Master Television. Welcome back to Golden Age Technology, here on Supreme Master Television. Today we are learning about producing oxyhydrogen or HHO gas at home with our guest Mr. Peter Wood, a green energy enthusiast from Austria. Let's first look at how oxyhydrogen gas can be used in various settings. Let's have a look what we can do with this gas. This flame is very, very hot. Uh, I have here a piece of wood. You can see how quickly it starts to burn. The rest of the flame you can't see, but it really reaches quite far. I have here a a nail and you can see immediately this nail starts glowing immediately the whole nail glows and if I would uh, carry on then it's already melted Uh, for welding copper and uh, copper with, with the fittings and immediately this is flowing. We have a piece of glass and this glass immediately starts melting In Peter Wood's next demonstration he shows how oxyhydrogen gas can enhance the performance of a petrol-powered internal combustion engine 
When connected to such an engine, the HH hole gas creates additional power. The motor now runs at a higher rate with the addition of the HH hole gas. You can hear how the gas increases the acceleration of the engine. An additional benefit of injecting oxyhydrogen gas in an engine is that it improves fuel economy in terms of petrol usage. Mr. Wood now shows us the steps to construct a dry cell electrolyzer. Now I would like to show you how to build such kind of a dry cell. It's really easy uh, for everybody to do. The first thing we would need is uh, such kind of uh, stainless steel plates. We found out that uh, it's better for efficiency if the plates are not too high. So I would rather suggest uh, to make a cell which is probably 30 centimeters uh, large and only 15 centimeters uh, tall. So you need this kind of uh, stainless steel plates and in these plates you can uh, drill a hole on the uppermost part, right on the top. This is for the gas outlet. Let's say for at 12 volt you need five uh, chambers which makes six plates like this. And two of these plates have a little uh, thing like this for connection to the power connection. Then you need uh, gaskets. Uh, these gaskets, I just cut them out of a ordinary foil. This is a foil you can buy in any uh, uh, shop for gardening. Uh, this is foil for ponds. And I cut them out of this. And for each chamber you need uh, such kind of a, of a gasket. So you can have then a plate and you put on a gasket. Then you have the next plate. And these two together makes one chamber. It is sealed all around and the water or the gas can only come out through this little hole. So you have this uh, 12 times. Then you need a plate. Uh, I made this out of acrylic. It's not the best choice because acrylic is very, uh, has to be handled very carefully. So you have the acrylic plate which is a little bit bigger in size than uh, the, the steel plates and you put it on and you have your 12 or, or 6 or 7 or, or 20 plates. It depends upon the current you want to run through. And in the end you have the, the last gasket and then you have your second plate which comes on the top. And then you have uh, three droads. These are normally uh, one meter sides, three droads, and uh, there is a, a washer and a nut. I have a fly nut. And you can put, push uh, through all this, uh, the three droads, with the washer from both sides. And then this is tied together. This is a fitting for a, a hose. This is about 10 millimeters inner sides and 13 millimeter outer sides. And this is a quarter inch sides uh, three. And this I can put in here. And from the other side then the, the hose. And this is absolutely uh, gas tight. Hydrogen gas is very, very fluid and it can go uh, nearly through everything. So it has to be absolutely uh, gas tight. And here we can see I have in my 
uh, my big uh, sites uh, electrolyzer, I have uh, 31 plates. This makes uh, three units uh, with 10 chambers and they are uh, in parallel. And the smaller sites uh, dry cell has only 21 plates. This makes 20 chambers with 21 plates and only two uh, parallel. It depends upon the current you want to give through the cell. So we should have at least 2 uh, to 2.4 volt uh, for each chamber we, we would use. And uh, the efficiency in my bigger cell, it was about 216 watt and I had 2.7 liters a minute. And this is quite a lot. I hope that many people will start to use the gas for welding and also for hopefully for, for the generator that could produce electricity and heat too. And then we would have a, a big movement and we could really drop the amount of climate gases because uh, from this gas, when it is burned, it is very important to say there is no climate gas coming out. It's just water in the end. No uh, CO2, nothing uh, harmful. Our gratitude goes to Peter Wood for his helpful introduction on creating a dry cell electrolyzer and for demonstrating the many uses of HHO gas. May green and clean energy sources like oxyhydrogen gas quickly become the wave of the future for our planet. Thank you for joining us today on Golden Age Technology. Please stay with us for vegetarianism, the noble way of living after noteworthy news. May harmony and tranquility prevail over our world. For more details, please see www.suprememastertv.com forward slash GAT.